corporate accounts payable just a moment oh god corporate accounts payable just a a moment moment. (laughs) sorry i didn't mean to peek in your ears up there (laughs) welcome back to the show i'm john i'm Brittany, and this is random rewind today we've got a another movie we haven't done a movie in a freaking long time um that's true (laughs) this is our our first movie by the same director of a movie we did before. Absolutely fantastic director. Yes. And should we just get into it to yes, what we it should. is? Absolutely. Should we name the director and then see if people can guess yeah, what it's, it it's is? A, it's a Mike Judge film. And there aren't very many films that he's actually done. Which we love because he also did Idiocracy, which was our first podcast episode. Absolutely. So we have a love for Mike Judge. And nobody captures mundane human life. Like Mike Judge does this in not the cartoon. Not a single soul. No, if you look at King of the Hill. I was just going to say yeah, King of the Hill. Exactly. And I've been kind of getting in. I've been watching on YouTube. People do like reviews of that or whatever. And they like, it's so funny, but it's just real well, it's just dry. Life. It's dry it's, humor. But it's, it, it's, it's relatable because it's, it feels real. Yeah, Even if you don't live like in a place where they live, you live in a place you where li- they live. You know what I mean? You all have the, it's the same characters yeah, exactly. or the same cast, cast of characters. So today this movie, yeah. which is a cult classic yeah. from 1999, the year of movies, by the way, oh, because what Matrix came out that year, mm-hmm. um, what was that other one? Which has a correlation with this one. We'll go over oh, that. does it? We'll, we'll go Allure? over that later. Yeah, 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 yeah 1999 exactly. is a good movie yeah, yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, So uh, Fight Club came out that year. That's what I'm American thinking American Beauty Club. came out that year. And American Beauty. And all four of those have a bit of... Uh, and we'll go over that later. Anyway. And we yeah. have a special guest today. Oh, we do. We actually have a producer. Behind the, the camera. <laughs> Behind the camera. S- say hi. Hello. There she is. is She's producing. Uh, yeah, we, we have we have a, a producer volunteer today. And which, which means... <laughs> <laughs> that we may she's actually stay on. What she's doing. Yeah, yeah, but she's, she's going to tell us to when, like get back on track. Yeah, because we tend to uh, uh, sail off the ship quite All often. All the time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I already sailed off the ship because we still haven't said what movie we're talking about yet. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're talking about the film called Office Space. Office. I mean, you couldn't tell by the title of this of this video or podcast. Oh, yeah, you've already seen you've it. You've already seen it. So you know exactly what we're talking about. But Office Space is probably the sequ- sequential frequent freaking uh film that has to do with mundanity it's <laughs> in, just, in our in our lives it's that america that corporate america uh, uh that, that the sheer hatred for corporate america work in a cubicle oh absolutely yeah and it, it, it kind of goes beyond just cubicle work it, it goes to any kind of job really i think you setting it though in a cubicle space oh, is the best way to do it because it kind of shows like you in this little you know your little section and it th- again it like it's just real it's a real life reflection of the weird real world but put into a movie which right. like i said mike judge does fantastic on like real life scenarios that this guy's story peter yeah who we're going to be talking about today he's the main character he is just a regular guy right just a regular dude right who absolutely hates his job and that's my favorite. Like he doesn't turn into Superman or anything. He just no, no, not at all. Is it just a dude who hates his job? No, and and you you see it right off the bat, right with the intro. You see uh, uh, Michael, who plays uh, it's David uh, David Herman, who plays Michael Bolton. Michael Bolton, <laughs> exactly. which is so funny. He's, and the whole time though, too. They're oh like, yeah, any the relation? Time. Any relation to Michael? No, just call me Mike. By and the then, way, <laughs> I did me. go to high school with somebody named Willie Nelson. Did you really? So I understand Michael Bolton's yeah, I dilemma. Im- I can imagine that that would be. Uh, at first, it would be like uh, a, a weird, cool thing. Then after a while, it just becomes super it's freaking constant. annoying. It's like, your name's what? Yeah, Whoa. exactly. Yeah, it's your, like, your name's Michael Jackson? Yeah, it's a pretty freaking common name, dude. It's like the two most common names. <laughs> exactly. It's like, oh, duh. Okay, anyway, the opening scene is literally one of my favorite parts. Because how many thousands of times have you been stuck in traffic? Oh, yeah. And one lane's moving, and the one next to you, right? So you're like... Let's go over there. I stopped doing that Guess a long what? time ago. Probably about the same age as he was in this film. When he still did it. When he still did it, it's probably about the last probably the last few years that I stopped going, Oh, this one's going faster. I'm and gonna then try move this over. One. I don't. This one's gonna go fast. I, I just stay in my freaking lane. I now. stay in my lane. Yeah, unless like the, the right lane is totally wide open and blown, you know, you can like literally punch it. Yeah. Different story. Yeah. It depends where I'm going to. Like right. if I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna stay in that like where that turn lane's gonna and if I'm going like 40 more miles then i'm yeah. probably staying freaking put yeah it's not, like let's just go no 
But he, him, and everybody else. Um, there's there's Michael Bolton, and then who's the other friend? Is uh, uh, Samir? Uh, Samir. 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 Yeah. Sorry, not there's no eyes. Samir. No. Samir play, played by uh, AJ uh, Newton. Nudu. Nadu. Nadu. Who That's I it. heard is from like um, Jordan, and he had to like he had to change his dialect for this movie. Oh, it's quite possible. I mean, a lot of people change their dialect for films. So yeah, I yeah, can, yeah. So I can he imagine had to. So. Uh, and the American accent is really easy to pull off for a lot of people. Yeah, but he had to do an uh, 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 Indian American accent. Right. I guess he did. You're right. But it was very washed out. It was pretty white. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, we're all white, right? Yeah, it was pretty. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was. It's probably about as as accenty as Literally I Literally in the room with my two most whitewashed friends who aren't white. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, 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 don't, ha- I don't even have an accent anymore. It's gone. It's like, like, where's all, where's ages, the, uh, yeah, where's your accent go? Ago. But you, your home, you haven't been to your home country since you were, what, four? Four, So yeah. it makes sense. Yeah, there's, there's, it's just gone. <laughs> but my mom still has an accent. You know what I mean? Well, of course she does. Because she still speaks the language that I don't. Oh, she still speaks it? Oh, yeah. She so, didn't make you learn it, though. I I learned it. I knew it. You knew it I because I still know bits and pieces of it. I just I I'm not fluent. But in she it didn't say like you have to learn. I mean, when we were growing up, I'm, it was very insinuated. It was my more dad like was very old fashioned. You can't so. hear. You can't understand me if you don't learn. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we. I mean, everybody. I mean, I still know. Like, if, if I listen to somebody speak in Arabic, I can tell. I was going to say, saying. can you say something in Arabic right now? No. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then you don't know nothing. <laughs> no, I mean, you're I on could, the spot. I could because I'm on the spot. I won't. How about that? Okay, got it. Okay, okay. we're still in first scene. Yeah. We're we're on track. Okay, we're in first scene. The the, the part where he gets the <laughs> where when Peter gets into the building. Wait, this, who plays the, Peter? Peter is uh, Ron Livingston. There we go. Yeah, and he's a great actor. Um, he probably plays the same role. He's not very diverse. In he's roles. not diverse, but he's really good at playing every man guy. Kind of like Luke Wilson. He's good at the every he's man the role. Every dude. Yeah. He's just the dude. He's the right? guy. Yeah, he he's is. just average Joe. He is average, average Peter. Average Peter. Yeah, in this in this particular role. And I keep looking up and I'm keep getting blinded by that fucking light today. So I've got like forty thousand spots in my eyes. Right you can't now. say that without going <laughs> blinded by the, the light. light. Oh, yeah, I guess you can't, huh? Wrapped up like a douche yeah. in, the <laughs> in the night. Blind. Sorry. Oh man. Copyright. <laughs> yeah, copyright. We just, we just got struck down real fast. It's worth it for, for yeah. the musical yeah, entries. Exactly. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Uh, so yeah, the, when he walks into the building, when mm-hmm. he first walks in the building, what in, happens inter, to him? Inter tech. Inter tech. Inter tech. Inter tech. Uh, what? What do you mean? What happens? In in a a tech. There's no R. In a tech. In a Um, tech. He goes in from the lobby, goes into the back room, and he gets zapped by the fucking door. (laughs) The door pops in. Oh, that's right. The door handle is electrified because it's got the little buzzer thing, and it pops him Uh, every day. And he's aware that it's going to do it. That he knows it's going to happen. He knows it's going to happen, but he goes and grabs it anyway because he has to get in the freaking building. Oh, my gosh. So he's very aware of his situation, like throughout, probably throughout his entire weekend, right? So he he probably doesn't even get to relax on the weekends because he knows. Fuck, I only got one more day. Well, he doesn't relax you know I mean? on the weekends because he's he's been told to work on the weekends. Uh, his boss, who Lombard, yeah. Um, if you uh, could, uh, <laughs> how does he go? Like, um, Peter. The only see, so Lombard. So I, I look at him. He's very very passive aggressive, right? Yeah. But in all actuality, if you look at him, he's actually a really good boss. He's an okay boss. He's not bad because you've seen tyrants. As you, bosses, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like super horrible. freaking horrible bosses. And you've seen pushovers that don't know how to do their fucking job. And he's you're like, like, I can do my job, but I can do your job better than you. You don't want a boss you can do their job better than. He's kind of in the middle. He's, well, he's like very dedicated to the work. So he knows that everything's got to get done a certain way. And you can't break him. I guess so to an extent, you know I mean? though, because like, is he doing the, the TSP or the, the what are TBS they? reports? The TBS reports? Or is yeah. he just pawning it off on everybody else and that's why it no everybody's got to do a tps report you didn't get the mem- memo it? she didn't turn him, her to tps report in this morning and, and it's I really swear freaking unfortunate because <laughs> the new memo came out did you get that and if you send me the memo again i know i a, already have it it's a memo so, i got sent you the memo about the memo though eight people have already come up to me about this <laughs> yeah it's, un- it's fucking unfortunate so peter yeah. has eight bosses yeah um but lumber's his number one and he were he's a programmer for for intro in, in, in attack inner tech in and it's a regular everyday office job. And then we're introduced to the cast of characters in the office. Correct. Like Milton. Yeah. Milton, there there is I, I couldn't find this theory and I was gonna look it up specifically about Milton, how he kind of crossed platforms. Oh yeah, there's the the infamous red stapler. I wouldn't have picked I up this morning. My stapler. <laughs> 
What is he? How does he say it? Like it's my, 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 my red stapler. Uh, 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 it's my red stapler. Fun fact: <laughs> yeah. these staplers did not come in the color red until three years after the movie because there was such a demand for them. Oh, I know exactly. The original they, one was just spray painted. It was, yeah, exactly. They spray painted it red. Yeah, and, look, and then now they started there's... selling them, and they're at a premium too. So I went out to go buy this next to the other swing line uh, staplers that were fourteen ninety nine. This one is thirty three dollars. Ew! Just because it's red. What's that called? Like a like the color tax or like in women's world they call it the pink tax the when pink they tax, they the make tax, it the girl tax the girl tax on girl pens so this is and girl, the it's such stupid this is freaking. the novelty tax it's on a no, it's colors absolute, absolutely i mean the, you you don't want a red swing line stapler unless you've seen this film that that's the only reason why <laughs> no, you'd want it really no there's other, no other reason. reason why yeah exactly so uh there, there's your it's red cute. swing line now i have a red swing line it's a prop for one day yeah so milton's <laughs> like the the, he's the pushover. The office he's pushover. He's the pushover. I feel so bad for him. Like, I feel like, I don't know. But it, do you, did you know somebody like that in the work? Did, okay, for, here's the first question for you. Did you ever work in corporate America? I, I mean, you just recently did, right? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, well, that was, I guess that would have been my closest uh, real. Okay. In high school, I did intern at Northrop Grumman. Oh, okay. So, so that's there you like go. A There's big, your first introduction to That it. was a big office building because and then you got to deal because you, you're dealing with like corporate politics and all the other bullshit that comes along with it just right? just being in there i guess because i was already in high school so then going into a workforce you think like oh this is going to be you know it's work and i'm a senior and like gonna go in the real world then you get out into the real world and you're like this is exactly high school but older people or like different circumstances because even when i worked in that office building as a as i was in high school but obviously the other people weren't and it was all drama i was in finance for some reason i don't know why they put me there but it was you know that's, susan that said right. so and so about mark and like this and that and this and that and i'm like what is going on like i had no idea because oh the, you mean the drama that this comes the with drama work. Oh, yeah, of work that's what i'm saying hilarious. like it's the same as high school i was like so i'm graduating high school to go into a new high school essentially that's what college is that's what every job it's just the every, same yeah, thing. yeah you still deal with the same bullies you still see, deal with the same clicks the dynamics you still, of people it, it doesn't change really it never changes that's why no. you kind of have to like you either know what it is and you go in knowing what it is and you the kind of ad pet. adapt to your environment yeah. or you were miserable all the time, which kind of is what Peter was doing here. Like, well, it doesn't seem like hated, it's just Peter. It seems like all of them hated their freaking They job. did hate it, but also at the same time, like they left as soon as they got there to go get coffee and there's not many places that will allow you to go. Where did they go? It's not called shenanigans, <laughs> but it's like that the flare, they they leave their office day. Yeah, basically, the, the, the restaurant took... took it was kind of a TGI Fridays. Right? It was like TGI yeah, Fridays. Yeah. So they go into the red, like, but they left work. They that's a pretty high privilege. Like, oh, it was going to go. Get I coffee. don't think that's a privilege. I think they just ducked out. They literally just ducked out. But there was no repercussions. There was no. no there's nobody looking over their shoulder. That's what I'm saying. Is so it can't that, be that bad. That's where I'm getting at. Is that Bill Lumberg is really Lumberg. not? Yeah, Lumberg. Lumberg. Yeah. 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 Peter. What's your best mm, Lumberg? Have mm. you? Uh, you turn in the TPS report today, Peter. Who plays Lumberg? Uh, What's the actor's name? Uh, uh, Diedrich. No, 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 no. That's uh, Gary Cole. So Gary he Cole plays. says that the most thing that gets told to him is that is the um mm, yeah <laughs> the Lumberg mm, mm, yeah yeah. I'm gonna need you to come in on Saturday. Yeah, and I also need you to come in on Sunday. And he doesn't. Well, he okay. So he's so you got to remember he's not he's not sorry to interrupt, but he was not forcing him to do so. He's technically asking him he could say no yes peter you absolutely but, could say no but peter always says yes so i feel that lumberg will always go to him because he knows he's, a rel will, which, he's reliable yes so of course he's gonna go There's, to him honestly if you break down lumberg's character he doesn't do anything wrong as a boss okay no, hawaiian no, shirt friday sounds fantastic i love dress up days he, he's trying to incorporate that good business culture right at work but he's just so mundane and he really doesn't know how he's also that middleman person who's just like has to be there so i don't want to like talk shit on him because i feel like the problem more here is just peter's self-reliance on it peter's mindset is kind of like in the dumps to begin with yeah because his ability to keep saying yes and his ability to not stand up for himself and say like no i don't have to be here or no i can't or whatever right which he got you know he doesn't have any kids he's not he does have a girlfriend um in the beginning of the movie but it's not he's definitely not like a he doesn't have kids he doesn't have like a a big responsibility besides just existing but he hates it like oh, 100 he's it's it's horrible for him but it's not i don't know from the outside it doesn't look that bad but it's kind of cool what happens 
in the movie because since he's been so depressed and he's so um what's that called like like in that mindset he needs to change his mindset he does he needs he needs to get out of he needs to break away from this this norm that he has every day his routine right we get everybody gets freaking bored of a routine every single day Uh. if you're doing the same thing day in day and this doesn't have to be specifically a, a cubicle job you could be working at the movie theater and if your job every day at the movie theater is you got to come in you got to clock in you got to go and sweep freaking stu- uh, theaters then you got to go and make some popcorn I, and every day it's the same thing no, it's day the same in thing. Day i out. agree you get bored out of your goddamn mind and it's not just jobs to me though like i'm i don't know i repetition is literally the secret to life and so is consistency but i hate both of them because like even just my everydayness of like having to wake up and then you have to do the laundry. Then you have to do the dishes. And then you have to clean the bathroom. And then the, guess what? You go back and you start all over again yeah, from the exactly. beginning. You know now, what I mean? Now, now Just you're, like now you wanted a job. Dinner, and now you're going to watch a yes. last movie or a TV show. And then you're going to fucking sleep. And, and you're going you go to wake sleep. up and start all over and again. It's, it's, it's the it's, same thing. It's the same. Yeah. It, it goes the same for somebody who's who's just maintaining a household or some. Just your. If your daily routine is identical every single day and you don't break it up with something like a podcast, um, you, get, <laughs> <laughs> you get bored out of your mind. If You have to have some type of hobby in order to throw it in there. I started to implement. So we're taking a trip, right? So I started implementing into the middle of my day, 20 minutes a day. It's not, nothing huge. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm learning. I'm teaching myself how to play the ukulele. For 20 minutes a day. I have somebody who just learned how to do the ukulele. And I'm teaching myself how to speak Japanese. There you go. But that's just 20 minutes out of my day. And it doesn't feel like it feels broken up to the point where I'm kind of setting myself a schedule up top of my work and on top of other fun stuff that I do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 But when you but you need if you do something every day for like 10 minutes a day. Have you ever heard that? What's that? There's like a thing. So they say if you do something 10 minutes a day for. I don't know, like five years or something, then the amount of hours you've had put into it is more than like even some professionals. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it basically turns you until you, I mean, you're not really technically considered a professional until you get paid for X, Y, Z. I know. But you are you have the same skill set as a professional. Yeah, because you've been so doing it the same amount cool. of time. You're just not. So for those that don't like sit around and don't do anything, don't learn anything at all, all day long. And there's a lot of people that do that. Even myself, I'm guilty of it too. There's like a, a lot of times where I'm like, okay, I want to do this, but you know, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Uh, maybe oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Dude, maybe I'm, I'll do it tomorrow. I've been playing this this tycoon game that does absolutely nothing. It teaches you nothing, and it's literally just doing mundane tasks. Yeah. And I'm why am I playing that game? I well, can be doing mundane joy- tasks in real life. Yeah, yeah, like, but that's just a joy the- in life. Like a lot of people give people a hard time for playing video games. And but this I'm, is you a, know I'm a good proponent. But I also games. love video games. But I'm saying like this game in particular. Yeah. There's no the time sucker. It's a time sucker. Like there's yeah. there's really no like goal or anything to it. TikTok, yeah. I feel like you can learn. You can learn no, from no, TikTok. You, you can, but it is truly 100% a time sucker. And I love TikTok. Don't get me wrong. I will defend TikTok till I'm freaking blue in the face. But you think it sucks time. But, oh my God, it sucks up I don't know. It's I think I learned more. I, I think I learned more from TikTok than I would from like, I don't, I don't know. TikTok teaches you a lot. So at the end of that very first day, right? Um, he, yes. uh, a Peter goes with his girlfriend who is, oh shoot, what is his girlfriend's name? Like his first, it's like, like Anne or something. It's not a good name. No, no, no. It's, oh shoot. What is his girlfriend's Compared name? Yeah, it to, is Anne. It is Anne. It is Anne? By, oh uh, my God. Look at me. <laughs> Alexandra Wentworth. Um, Anne's his girlfriend and she's, she's kind of, kind of a, a bitch. Mm. It, she doesn't Before treat him very well. Before we get to well. Anne though. Oh, sure. Lawrence. Oh yeah, the best friend who he oh. can hear through the wall. Oh, I've got a whole thing about Lawrence. Dude, so. He's my favorite. He's my <laughs> favorite gonna, character. That's what I was gonna get to put. I have him down here as the most, uh, the most. Who's the most hang outable character oh, of this for film? For sure, Lawrence. I would hang out with him all day, hands down. I wish he was my neighbor and exactly. could hear me through the wall and then come yeah. over and be like, "He's I think super she's freaking thoughtful." When he, he's like, "Just come over, like you know, because you can hear me, hear me through the wall." Just come over. And he comes over and he's, he cracks open. Oh, I got my own bottle. He brings his own bottle. He brings it all. Who yeah, plays exactly. Lawrence? Um, who plays him? Because uh, the, the the only other real thing that we know him for, uh-huh. uh, Dietrich uh, Bader, is uh, Drew Carey's uh, "Whose Line Is It Anyway." That's oh, the last did he, thing. Was that's he on a, there? That's the last thing he was on. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's really? been on other I little feel like stuff. He's been a he, lot. Not really. Maybe, well, nothing. Nothing memorable. Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn were up for that role. And he got it. So, but he and he I think plays, it's perfect. Yeah, he plays that role better than both oh, those two characters so because good. I feel that every character in this film is so well organized. They're put in place for a reason. Every single one plays the part very, very well. So, 
uh, the director did, did a great job making no, sure that fantastic. they got, you know what I mean? So I don't know if anybody else could have played these parts any I better. don't think so. But side note, bring your own bottle opener because I went, I to, a my own bottle I went to a party last weekend and somebody had to open my beer and bring it to me. And then I kind of had this existential crisis of like, I didn't open my own drink, which is dangerous in the world. Well, if you're at a party, like with oh, friends. You never no. With friends? With the, no. Well, I mean, yeah, you're at friends, but like, you know, some people, but. Oh, just have one. Just uh, bring a bottle opener. Yeah, I always have one. Be like There's Lawrence. one on my keychain. There you go. I always have one. Be like Lawrence, bring a bottle opener. I have one on every single one of my keychains. Open your own <laughs> bottles. Yeah. That's just a safety. Uh, yeah. Or learn how to do it off your ring. Your ring. Yeah, just I don't can't use do that. It. Just don't do it if you're freaking have a, a gold but winning ring. because It'll just, break. Well, you oh, can, do you, you know can, from experience? You can take a chunk out of that shit. Mm-hmm, so you know. Especially real soft gold. So shit, you. Yeah, you fuck yourself real fast. You know anyway, that one. Yeah. Anyway. So, so back to Anne. Sorry. In a red with Lawrence because he's iconic. And the girlfriend. That's who we're yeah, talking about. Yeah, so right we're talking now. about and the girl, the and the the first girlfriend. Ooh. You're right. So they go. She has him go to this a hypnotherapist. A hypnotherapist who was the same character that played in Jurassic Park that drove. I can't remember the the actor's name to, for the life of me. But anyway, so he's he's asked, which is really weird to me, by the way, because Peter is sitting there with Anne uh-huh. and her friends. I know or who brings their why friends. The fuck to your, are her why friends would you bring there? your friends to your uh, partner's like hypno session? Like she shouldn't be in there. Honestly, I, like, I didn't even understand. I'm like, unless it was like a, like all of them were gonna do it. It's kind of what it felt like. But you would want if I was doing I it. I want privacy. I would want. I was gonna say that's hip, freaking weird. Hypnosis. The people, you know, some people believe it, some people don't. Basically, what it is is the power of suggestion. Right. Right. And. You need to almost be kind of isolated because right. if there's any sort of outside, like if I was there, if I was Peter and there was like, you were hypnotizing me right now, I'd be like, no, there's too many people around. <laughs> like I can't I get into really the mindset because that's a lore thing too of like, what happened here? Like, so in, according to the movie, the hip, the hypnos works, but then also what happens right in the middle of the hypnosis? Oh, Right. Yeah. What, what if, happened? Oh, we're in the middle of his hypnosis. Right in the middle we'll, we'll, of it. We'll get to that in a second. So before he gets <laughs> hypnotized, uh, Peter is explaining to the hypnotherapist about his day, right? Yeah. And, his Monday. Uh, his mon- Monday, mundane, Monday. Monday. There you go. Monday, Monday, Monday. Monday. Someone has vacation Monday. Someone said that to me. I swear to God, I'd probably fucking cold Oh my God, that is so funny. Fucking hate that. <laughs> See, I've in in bars, that's never a thing. It's our off day I, is Saturday. The only time I really had... It, that comment ever said to me is that very first job out of college was a uh, corporate and they corporate you got job. A case of the and you're like, you got a case of the mo- okay, up. Garfield, yeah. sh- chill. Like, like can't hear some lasagna go the fuck away. <laughs> <laughs> but he, anyway. they said it to him multiple oh, times. Oh yeah, on this time. especially especially Nina. Nina's anyway. So Nina's a, that special character in that freaking. So she does a great job. Oh uh, sure. <laughs> I mean, so, like portraying so, that character. I'm going to read this. This is Peter's line, basically. He says, so I'm sitting in my cubicle today. And ever since I started working here, every single day of my life has been worse than the day before it. And that's just fucking sad. But that hits, says, though. So that means that every hits. single day you see me is the worst day of my life. Mm-hmm. And so the hypnotherapist is all, what about today? Is today the worst day of your life? And Peter goes, Yeah. <laughs> the therapist goes, man, that's messed up. <laughs> I know, but that's messed up. And then tomorrow is gonna be worse. <laughs> exactly. Because every day. But he that hypno the hypnotherapy guy says, you know what? We're gonna change that today. We're gonna change that We're today. We're gonna change your life. So he puts him in this trance. He's in this super sedated, chill, not give a shit moment, right? Yeah. To, to let everything go. Hypnotherapist has a heart attack and dies <laughs> <on> the- <laughs> Which is so funny. It's like <laughs> literally Peter's sitting there like this, like the girlfriend and the friends go um, rushing to the wake up. Chill. But Peter's like, he's out. He's out. He's in. Or he, I guess he's in he's because in. he's in the and, hypnosis state. And this is where office space really, really starts. Cause this is where his moment of not giving any fucks. Yeah, talk about not giving begin. a fuck. Oh no. It's, he, he stopped. I mean, so the the film re- was really really good about it up until about halfway. Then he started giving more fucks later on. But at the very beginning of it, yeah, he gave no fucks because the first day at work the next day, he was supposed to work that Sunday. He, yeah, that's why he had a hundred messages on his answering he machine from his boss. In and he's and like, like nah. um, this is lumbar. It's Just, ten o'clock, and uh, yeah, exactly. Come in whenever you can. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He's not gonna come. He parks in Lombard's spot the next day. Yeah, but honestly, what a what 
if that okay here's the question though because yeah. if that was an option would you take it what's that the uh, hypnosis to almost like kind of make your cares go away or do you think it oh it did too much it's like a lo- lobotomy dude <laughs> it was not lobotomy he just stopped caring uh, about i it. i don't have a need for Be- that but because i, guess some people I do. get it though i get it because no, i understand if you had that if that was my life if that was me going into work every damn Which, day but that's ever that's everybody same- you guys know about this like this is no, Almost it's, everybody's it's situation true, where but you... he's also, he's got no kids, he's got no wife, he's just by himself. That's why it makes it even he, better. And he's wallowing in his sorrows every single day. Exactly. He's got nobody to bounce any ideas off of, nobody to go home to to, to, to talk to about it. So yeah. there's no release for he him. He has Lawrence. You know what I mean? <laughs> he has he has, has he someone to talk have, to. He does have Lawrence. But the thing is, is that, in so it's, let's say, like, beginning Peter was so scared of, like, of the corporate world in the sense of like oh yeah i'll work saturday i'll work sunday i'll do whatever i need to do because this kind of the theme throughout the movie is like no matter how much hard work i do there's no reward coming back to me so all the weekends i work or all the thing you know he's when he talks to the bobs which we're not there yet but he it's he's essentially saying like no matter how hard i work there's no reward on my end no other than the pay and that, that's that kind of goes other along than the just lines hourly of, pay though right 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 that goes along the lines of everybody at work though in general because exactly. so corporations go, don't give a shit about you exactly so what he's saying is like is if why go the extra mile or why put in that hard work or why stress this about is it why so this is why much. that stupid ass term came came to be when after after covid of quiet quitting people aren't quitting dude and it's not quiet people are basically saying that Look, you pay me X amount of dollars. I'm going to do X amount of dollars worth of well, work for I'm you. I'm going to just do what I'm here to do. Exactly. Quiet, that's what quiet quitting is. Quiet quitting, and they make it in the sense of like, I'm not doing anything else than what is outside absolutely of my required. Scope, outside of my scope of work. Exactly. Uh, you want me to do extra work? Well, f- compensate me then for it. Then give me extra money. Exactly. And that's not... It's not improper for people to yeah, ask for this. Yeah, but how many jobs... And I've done this, and Des is my coworker. She knows this. <sighs> I like would always do above and beyond the most that's just how i am as a worker i understand that and i i get that thought process and a lot of people have that that work integrity that mm. work ethic put, built behind them by their parents or whoever it may yeah, i don't be. know where it comes from but it sucks um, but <laughs> i wish i didn't have it. i know like I, I usually try to go above and beyond so i can show that i do better than mm-hmm. you know i'm worth more than but they honestly don't give a shit. Nobody cares. They do not nobody care. gives a shit no they really don't sorry if that's you, reality if you died tomorrow they would replace you the they next day. They would replace day. you, yeah. Seriously. It's no, that's why I always tell people, it's like... I mean, they're going to replace you eventually, but they would replace you immediately. immediately. That job posting would be up in 24 hours. And your stuff would be packed in a fucking box and shipped off to your family. And that's I've it, also, gone. like, I've been in jobs where they they mess with your mind, at least when I was younger, and they would say, like, you can't make the money anywhere else that you make here. Oh, or always. That's you called, can't just gaslighting you. Gaslighting, yeah. So yeah. then you get scared. You're like, okay, well, maybe I shouldn't get a new job because maybe they're right. But when reality, I'll tell you this right now, no, after I quit that job. job, every single job I've had since then, I have made more money than that always. first that, initial job. And that's almost always the case. That's why people constantly go, okay, I'm going to quit in two years because they can make more money versus getting a, an, a raise because you're you're raise every single year is what three fucking percent yeah. well you can go pick up a new job and get yourself you know 15 or 20 and that's the thing though is like maybe because where we live is such a metro area but it's like there's so many places to work like it, say you work at a restaurant or in a factory or whatever it's like oh this one's not good guess what you could go next door and there's three other places that you could try to like work there i guess it's that fear of like not having a job but in reality it's like quitting that job might be the best thing mentally a, a lot of the case yeah let's go back to lawrence <laughs> oh my god i love lawrence so lawrence is like like we said he was very 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 thoughtful but there was a question that he asked lawrence like we're, we're talking about the case of the mondays hey man when you get to to work in the uh, uh get to work on mondays anybody ever ask you uh you get the case of the mondays and lawrence just sitting back in his chair he gets like genuinely offended he's like no, no, man. I believe you get your ass kicked if you, you ask something. You get your ass kicked. And Lawrence is a is a um a construction He's worker. A construction worker, right? He's doing. I'm, do, I'm doing the drywall down there at the new uh new McDonald's. New McDonald's. <laughs> exactly. I gotta wake up at six a.m. Drive over there. Super freaking chill. But yeah. I mean, he's right. I, yeah. If you walked into a, a a construction job like a lot of case in the Monday. It's like shut the f- front door. Yeah, you know. Seriously. It's like ugh. Peter. Uh, Peter then asks him. I hate uh, Mondays. <laughs> Uh, they're whatever. <laughs> Peter then I asked him, uh, and I believe that he's been waiting his whole entire life for this freaking question. Like he's been waiting for it to for be somebody asked. To ask him. Yeah. What would you do if you won a million dollars? And immediately, <laughs> immediately, 
man. Two chicks at the same time. <laughs> I think that's my favorite line. Because, like, okay. And he's sitting back drinking his beer. Well, what, what would you do? You, know, you mean besides two chicks at the same time? And, and Laura's like, yeah. <laughs> no, like, because, obviously. But Laura's even says, he goes, like, or when Peter asks Laura, he's like, that's all you do? He's like, well, I would need a million dollars to have two girls willing to do it with me at the same time. So, yeah, like, that's. What I would do, which honestly begs the question, what would you do if you had a million dollars? See, that's that's the issue, right? He's, he came up with it in a heartbeat. Oh, I'd he be like, knows. I'd be like, okay, I'm pay off some debt, you know, pay off my house, you know, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, like you don't like, have like a plan. Process. Not necessarily. I mean, I do, but I don't. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's pretty freaking hypothetical. He's like, oh, no, I know damn well. I know what I'm doing he with a million exactly dollars. He knows exactly what he's doing uh, with a million dollars. Two chicks at the same time. Two chicks at the same time. <laughs> I mean, honestly, why not? If I had a million dollars. <laughs> That's the way to go. That's the way to go, I guess. And, but it's but the like I know our answer is so boring. Like, what would you do with a million dollars? Like, invest it. Yeah, I'm like, uh, pay, off, pay off my house. Pay Did, off my uh, debt. Put it in some but, sort of like bank account that but, has high interest in it. Like, the, set up two college funds for my kids. You know what I mean? This yeah, be, like, it, well, that is shit. not. It's, yeah. You know, Mr. Beast would be shook. He'd be like, "That's not the answer I wanted." Like, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, I'm, I'm gonna give you a boring answer because that's we were boring people. I got bills, but homie. Because I think that's why this moozy mo- moozy. That's a fun word. That's a new moosey. word. That's this she just made mo- up a word. I know. Hashtag I did all the moosey. time. Hashtag moozy all the time. Yeah, the I like reason- hashtag better too. <laughs> Half tag Muzi. If that's my fucking rapper name right now, <laughs> and I could just that's it. Welcome DJ Muzi. Half <laughs> half tag Muzi. This movie, I think, because it became such a cult classic because of the mundane ship of it, right? Because right. And it is just so regular adult situation. Right, so, and this didn't do well in the theaters. No, it, it bombed in the theaters. Yeah. It just did, like idiocracy. Just like exactly. exactly. People don't know what they want until they have it or till they see it or. Yeah. Or usually what happens with these is they'll play it like on uh, Comedy Central or something like over and over I again. I think as soon as Comedy Central owned the rights to playing this, I don't think they stopped playing it for like a year. I, it was just constant. It was just always but on. But it's smart. It it's, it's a smart. It's a smart way to get your movie out. But it's because you see it and then you're like, oh, yeah, it's the one. Like even um, I, you know, I would I had bits and pieces of it throughout. I don't think I was like to the age of. It, the demographic it was going to but i remember growing up with it i remember not liking the poster for some reason the poster yeah a I, lot of people didn't like the i don't poster. know what it yeah. is it kind of throws me but off it, and it, it has nothing to do the second i see the poster i know what film it is. you know, it, I is, know what yeah. it is it's just milton and, and originally it didn't have his eyes through it oh really you, it was just a dude and milton is this is he's a comic character right or mike judge had a cartoon called like the mundane life of milton or did i don't he? know about that title yes he did i don't know oh, what it's interesting. called so Milton is based on these like comic uh, shorts, these animated shorts that Mike Judge used to do about Milton. So so oh. somebody came to him, a producer or whoever said, this needs to be a movie. Right. And he wrote it up. And then, you know, here we are. Right. So it turned, you know, he took his his art and turned it into a movie, which I guess it's hard to do. I don't know if I could do it. Well, I mean, he's a director. He knows he's he, he's, uh, he's a yeah, director. Exactly. And oh. he's he's just good at that kind of stuff. And, and what about? Corporate accounts payable, just the moment. Oh, God. Corporate accounts payable, just the moment. moment. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to peek in your ears up there. <laughs> just the moment. <laughs> corporate, account, corporate accounts payable. Corporate accounts payable. I could do that all day. Yeah, you could. I could be that job. <laughs> oh, God. I freaking hate her for it. So <laughs> I And you know what? And, and I don't want to skip too far. Okay. So Anne is still here. P- the the hypnotherapist has just passed out or no sorry he died he, no, no, he died he dies he died he of dies. a heart attack no no he's dead but he's, he's peter gone. is in the state of bliss and uh, he, he don't gets, give a he fuck just gets up and walks away and that next morning so not only did he miss work that weekend but his girlfriend right. broke up with him and admitted that she was cheating on him the whole time so, right but he, just, he didn't care he left me there with my friend yeah it was fucking weird to begin with dude yeah, why'd you bring your friends in the first place that weird that is the whole thing is weird anyway yeah, anyways. she's we but we're not supposed to like her and we don't so she's gone. No, no, she was that 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 hateful girlfriend she's the in the very hateful beginning. Girlfriend. You've, you've, got, you've always got one of those. He went Adam Sandler way, where he's he like did. he, he did. gets broken up with in the beginning, and then we uh-huh. see the love interest who is Jennifer Aniston. By yeah. the way, mm-hmm. right. love her. Yeah, she was young <laughs> in this. She was, but she was like they needed, famous. A, they needed a popular face. She was. She was definitely she was, the biggest name. You think uh, at the time? At the time, she was probably one of the biggest characters there. I mean, they needed a relevant big name because she was on Friends. She was on Friends then, yeah. There was a, I mean, all of them were good actors back then. 
Uh, they all had, not all of them, most of them were good actors back then, but they needed somebody super relevant mm-hmm. to attract a crowd, and Jennifer Aniston was it. So. Jennifer Aniston can always attract a crowd. Now. Like, uh, yeah, she's there's just that a new famous... movie that she's in, I can't remember what it was, but it was People run to her, they love her. Um, but she would, she did fantastic in this movie. She plays a waitress who, oh my gosh, so relatable. Yeah. Um, actually Mike judge plays her boss. Does he really? Yeah. He's the one who goes, you know, 15 is the minimum amount of flair. That's that's gotta be the most like, (laughs) so you've had frustrating conversations with bosses before. I've Uh had them before too. That conversation was not only like frustrating, but it's like, it became so irrational. Because he kept on asking for it's something. It, it's literally about nothing. Well, if that's the minimum you want. But it kept on going round and round this circle jerk about of freaking flair. flair. And th- that's the kind of, that, that's what I'm kind of talking about in the sense that it's not just the cubi, cubicle world. It's yeah. everything. It's everywhere. Restaurants no, and, and I think that's cool that they partnered it with restaurants to show it, that not only is Peter dealing with this boss, like his kind of boss, but also what's Jennifer Aniston's character's name? Uh, Joanna. Joanna is also dealing with it in her job. Right, because when they go and finally have lunch that one time, we're not finally. Dude, but, he they, inter- uh, but can we talk about how he asked her to lunch? Oh yeah. He walks in on nonchalant. Hey, I'm gonna go have lunch next door. Like, if you, you want to come. come. Yeah, exactly. Just super chill. And she's like, which place? Like, <laughs> you know, she's coming. Yeah. But the fact that he his cares are kind of like he don't give a fuck. That's the best way to say it. Is that his. Any oh, no, sort lax. of fear all the lax or irrationality yeah. that normally would be in his brain is gone because before he didn't even talk to her, you right. know, and he right. didn't even know, like everyone, Lawrence included, said your girlfriend, his ex-girlfriend was probably cheating on him, which she was. Right. But he was so afraid to lose that relationship that it wasn't even worth it to that to be a thought in his brain. Well, that's that's a thing for a lot of people, right? They're afraid to lose anything. Move on to a new job. Yeah. Move on to a new girlfriend. Whatever it may be. Scary. Because it's scary. But Change is scary for a lot of people. If you don't jump out of that comfort zone, yeah, you're going to be more miserable. Happen. Right, exactly. And then they, they finally end up having this, this lunch and it was... It's freaking awesome because he's all the buttons are really your buttons are really cool and she starts oh my flair my flair I really don't want to talk about my flair and then she goes off and they both talk about the grass is greener greener on the other syndrome, side yeah. you know and they both go no my job sucks yeah so they both agreeing to themselves and they're I don't want to talk about my job because my job sucks no but they are willing to talk about kung fu they are willing to talk about kung they fu. they want to talk about yeah, kung because fu. they're both into kung fu which is cool yeah I mean, so now they're common ground. They have two things. They hate their job and they both like Kung Fu. This is true. So we're off to a good start with her. Yeah, exactly. And it's Jennifer fucking Anderson. Yeah, exactly. When he walks into the office (laughs) that Monday, Uh right, uh, there's a construction guy working on one of the lights above and he grabs his drill and he drills out the doorknob. Oh, that's right. <laughs> the like, one that talks it. But punches it right smart. out of the freaking door so he doesn't get zapped by it anymore. Smart. He's like, fuck this door. And they, didn't the only reason he went back to work was to get a piece of paper to get um, her number in the first place? Like I'm he not only sure. went, I think he only went back into the building to grab a piece of paper to write down her phone number. Maybe. Because he no, like then he goes and sits in. down. But then he goes and sits at his desk. He goes and grabs that drill again. And he takes That's apart true. his desk and gives himself a view. Just, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> That was so funny. So was, back yeah. when we go back to the office, so what happens what happens back in the office is now they have brought in consultants, Bob and Bob, are here to shape up everything, right? They're like, basically gonna downsize the company. They're gonna fire they're everybody. They're gonna fire everybody. Yeah, they're they're consultants from an outside firm to go through and fire and all the unusable employees. Who, who which companies plays, don't do this anymore. But, but who plays the iconic who plays the guy with the not Milton with the glasses, but the other guy and they're like, So what do you do? And he's like, I'm telling you, I deal with the goddamn customers. <laughs> Tom, so the uh, yeah. the engineers don't have to Yeah, Tom. try. But have you like and then there's nothing worse than that when you're like kinda in the position of like a boss is talking to like so what do you do here and you're like a, a lot like how do i put it on paper or say it out loud like well you know your job role you know your job his job role was really irrelevant and redundant i want that job uh, yeah but it and it does and, it, do and it does exist but you're you're also probably one of the very first to get clipped right so when th- companies downsize, he's going to be That's fired, true, because they right? said, like, can't the customers just walk it to the engineers or whatever it was? Yeah, but I, uh, he's he's basically, what he he didn't portray it very well. He didn't he didn't paint the picture of, 
I am the the liaison between the customers and the engineers because engineers don't talk to customers. He, he doesn't say it that he way. He tries to, but he's he's almost having kind of a, like a panic attack. And I think that is and the reason why they show him having this kind of panic attacks is so they can compare him to Peter when Peter goes into his meeting. Right, exactly. His his line is this is like, look, I already told you I deal with I deal with the goddamn customers, so the engineers don't have to. I have people skills. I am good with dealing with people. Can't you understand that? What the hell don't you understand? Yeah, that? while he's yelling, yeah. I'm great with people. Get it. Get it. No, but he's. I love him. I love that actor too. He's, he's yeah. fantastic, and um, you know his storyline is like unfortunate, but fortunate at the same time. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what do you? How do you put that? Like, he unfortunately was he. He was in a really bad spot, just like Peter. Yeah. He was going to sit in his car while the garage is closed. We yeah. all know what happens he with was, that. Yeah, exactly. But he, he also had that game he wanted to invent, remember? Oh, such a great game. Jumping, Jumping to, conclusions. to conclusions. Oh, my gosh. And you go, so it's a dumb. mat. It was so dumb. And then you have a bunch of conclusions. conclusions and you jump to and them. And you jump. Brilliant. So Brilliant. Such a Jumping stupid. to conclusions. So such he's a stupid but fucking game. He doesn't think his idea is gonna he's he's uh, he's going through the same crisis that Peter is going through. Well, all of them are, yeah. Exactly. So they're all in this he- same headspace, which honestly is just shows you how corporate America screws with people's mental health. Yeah. Because if every single person is feeling this certain way, like in this office setting, it's like every th- something's wrong or right. something's got to give to an appointment yeah. but he kind of so he he his wife comes out while he's in the garage yeah so it doesn't happen right <laughs> literally backs out of the garage and, and gets sideswiped and gets <laughs> sideswiped by a truck yeah so he didn't die no no but he, he actually, was able he's able to sue he sued he and got, got a million dollars or something like that he got a big settlement yeah. and he got to make his jumping to conclusions game he did so i call that a happy ending i for him it is yeah yeah, I think it's, it is because he has that barbecue good. invites everybody over. He's, exactly. he's in a wheelchair. And fr- so his storyline, <laughs> his storyline plotted out well. Peter it, it is when Peter goes in to talk to the Bobs. Okay, remember the Bobs are like the top big boss consultant dudes. Yeah, they're the ones. They're you know they really have your job in their hands. And Peter comes in all nonchalant, like you know they're like, so tell me about your work day. The the <laughs> facial features or not features, but the facial expressions from Bob Slidell, the one on the left, okay. the taller, skinnier, skinnier one, played played by John McGinley, uh-huh. are so spot on. Well, and it's every emotion you can feel it with just his face. Oh, like, every single he's one. Really he's good. like so good with like contorting his face <laughs> yes, to match the emotion. To match the emotion. Oh my God, you he's feel such a good. You know actor. exactly what he's thinking just by his face. He overshined. Uh, um, Paul Wilson, who played Bob Porter, I really, the other Bob, I, by I don't know. Far, I by liked, far. I, but uh, did you I know a lot, of their, a lot of their lines together were improv? I, I love that. The, and when th- there's were, nothing better. Improv's my favorite. So when they, they finally realize that Peter is, you know, he's he's he's, he's corporate material. He's because, the guy. Because he's giving no fucks about his answers. No, they're like, what do you, you do? Know? He's like, I come in 15 minutes late. I sit at my desk for an hour staring into space doing nothing. And yeah. then I go home. And I go home. In a good solid week. In a good week, I work probably about a good solid 15 minutes. 15 minutes a week. <laughs> a week. Awesome. But he gets paid for 40 hours. Yeah, of course he does. And then they sit there and go, oh, this is okay. the guy. Oh, hypothetically. Hy- hypothetically. <laughs> what if, you know, this is all hypothetical, you, you know. We give you some kind of incentive. And then they go off yes. about, you know, and they finally promote him and they give him people underneath Everything him. that he's wanted the whole time and, and it took him not caring. It didn't, he didn't really I, want it because he didn't even ask for it. They just okay, gave it to him. Okay, that that turns a question too of like sometimes in life when you are focusing so hard on one thing, you kind of like can't. Let's For an example, I'll, you, like sometimes when, when couples are trying to get pregnant, it's sure. such a focus in on it that like literally nothing else matters and then it doesn't happen and they they say like stop focusing on it yeah like stop making it such a huge priority and eventually if you take the right steps you know the outcome will come right so peter was always so let's say what you anal about like wanting to be better or wanting to like he wanted to go up in the world right like he felt peter? like everyone was sh- no sh- well, everyone he, was shitting on him and he never was shitting got on him. i don't think he wanted to go up in the world i just think I he do, wanted to, to be an left extent, alone. even more money maybe that's true but like the fact that because he kind of says like we you know go in here all the time and do nothing or have all these people above me but the second he stopped caring is when everything like unfolded in his favor right yeah exactly you know like there but really i mean honestly it is kind of far-fetched because he had no consequences like you can't just like knock over your cuticle 
and yeah, you can. I guess you could, you but could. You, who's gonna say what? Someone's gonna yell at I you. I would be like, maybe gen- clean it janitorial up. or somebody might come in you and yell at you. You wouldn't go over to your coworker and be like, dude, you just made a huge mess. Yeah, I mean, it's the, a safety thing at that point. That, do you see anybody give a shit about anybody else in that office? Not a soul. Poor Milton. Poor Milton. <laughs> Milton, when they're there, I don't know whose birthday it was. They were passing around. It was cake. Lumbargs. Was it? Yeah. They were passing around cake. And heartbreaking fuck, scene. Fucking Nina, man. I swear to God. So I'll pass it along, Mil- Milton. But he's a, then he's trying to explain it, but he's so soft spoken. You know what speak. I'm saying? But, but that, that, last time, last time there was a cake and I, 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 didn't, I didn't get a piece. I just uh, pass it along, Milton. Milton is the reason why I teach my children to use your voice and be loud. Because he should have said, I'm eating this cake. And he should have just walked away. He should have took the cake and walked away. walked away. Exactly. That's what Eat he your cake, done. Milton. Yep. He lets other people control the narrative. Which uh, to the extent because he gets moved, his office gets moved like four times to move his desk, and they get he gets fired, but they never tell him he got he got fired. They never told him for free, but he was getting paid. No, yes, he was. He was not. Bet me so much money right now, I will fight you on this. He was not getting paid. Yes, he was getting paid. No, and then he went into the paycheck to go get payroll, and he said, "I have not received my paycheck yet." Not for that last one. After that, the Bobs sit down with Lombard, and they say they're talking about Milton, and they said he was fired five years ago, and there's been a problem with payroll, and they have been paying him since then and then now yes, they said instead of talking to him about it they said the problem will solve itself that's what they're saying we'll just correct the paperwork the problem will solve itself and then that's the first time it, he didn't get paid and though he stopped getting paid that's but we're arguing about the same that's what i'm saying no, but he, he was, was before getting paid yeah but but once he got fired he stopped getting paid and that's when he said but i, I, I burned this whole building down that's what, you know what I mean? But he was still getting paid for those years before because yeah, of that, that problem was, that with was payroll. prior to the movie ever even taking place. This yeah, is but once still, the Bobs came into play, they fired him again, but they said, we'll just let it pan itself out because he's technically already, already been fired, fired. But they fixed it. But they corrected it. the paperwork yes. so he no longer got paid. No That's longer. what I'm saying. But he, doesn't he get was paid anymore. getting paid. He was up until that point. And then these motherfuckers said, we're not even going to tell you. No. That you're not getting paid. No. How, like, they, they shit on him so bad. All the time. Because as a person, like, I don't care if you're weird. I don't care if you have big glasses. No other human being Deserves should be treated. Deserves to be treated like dog shit. And they put him in the closet and then, like, yeah, yeah. very simple. Give him his freaking stapler. Well, no. He stole that stapler from Lombard. Whatever. He did. Lombard has money. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. But that was the, that's what I'm saying with Lombard. He got his parking spot stolen. He got a stapler stolen, and he never really get, his car, his car got towed. And he he never really deserved the well, things. No, 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 he never his his demeanor never changes. Even when uh, <laughs> He's just even the same. When, even when Peter envisions Lombard screwing freaking Joanna. That's right. I forgot about that. He still has the same, the same coffee mug in his hand. Yeah. Peter <laughs> finds out that his uh, new love interest, Jennifer Aniston, slept with Slept Lombard. with a Lombard. No. Not, he, in his mind, it was that it Lombard. It was that Lombard, but in but reality. But there was another Lombard that was at the company. I've had that happen to me. I had, I had someone break up with me because they were told that I slept with somebody else, and it turned out the girl had the same first and middle name as me. That's weird. It, isn't that nuts? They were like, he was but like, I, I mean, can't believe you did this to me. And I was like, a, what did I do? You have a common name for your a age very group. common. You know what and I mean? It was first and middle name, but it even between my first name and middle name, there was three of us who had that same first and middle yeah. name. Like so, in, in our friend group that we hung out with, we uh-huh. had five Johns. Five? Five. So, so we all went by last name only. Yeah. J, well, I would just go J1, J2. Yeah, J2. We, we'd all just call each other by our last hey, name because it was stupid. Yeah. That's a lot of Those Johns. Five of us, yeah. Yeah, you can you, you can have a John and like a Jonathan, but once you get that third one in there, you're yeah, like... Yeah, we have two Jonathans, you're like myself Jay. and somebody else, but everybody went by John. Yeah. So, yeah. The other ones were just John? Just John. Oh, yeah. that's boring. <laughs> Their parents should have been more creative. Uh, <laughs> one was a Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Johnny, but it was Yeah, John. you could have a John, a Jonathan, a Johnny. Yeah. Uh, that's it. That's it. That's all so I got. You got, it, you got it. Yeah. Juan. 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 <laughs> he's the Asian one. No, he's the Mexican he's the one. Hispanic one. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyway, back to the movie. Yeah, back to the film. Back uh, to the show. Yeah, exactly. And, and in the boardroom where they're having their their meetings, did you see behind on the on the uh, the whiteboard? So there's a there's a big old like Gantt chart on the back wall, like okay. full on, like it's complex looking, and the the heading says planning to plan, and that is the gist <laughs> of a corporate of corporate America. Uh, and right? what do they call it? Like mission statements, and mm-hmm. even the Bobs, like 
who who decided that they get to and they come in like all nonchalant too like oh we're gonna fire people and then their friends well, they don't say that they yes, never they, they, they never say Peter. we're gonna, they never they, say we're gonna fire people they until, told Peter uh, in the meetings yeah so they're gonna say we're gonna fire uh, Michael Bolton we're gonna fire uh, he starts going through the list of Michael Bolton and then he's like Samir not not a not a not a not, a, not gonna work here not anymore. Gonna work <laughs> anymore. <laughs> So but that was that was ad libbed. No, was oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, smart. Very, yeah. I love it because you saw the look on uh, on John McGinley's face, we and it was it. like he wanted to die laughing because it was so good. It's like don't break character, don't yeah, break character. Because it was Paul Wilson who said it. So, but yeah. the, then then he now okay. This is when the when Peter almost starts. I guess this is when we see the the negative reproduction uh, repercussions of his state of mind. Yes. Because now we're thinking criminal terms. Yeah. So now his <laughs> friends get fired and then they start going over this plan of taking the company for what they've been doing as a job, which is they've been removing fractions of a penny off of the books in yeah. order to make the books even. They're shaving off the top. They're shaving off the top. Banks do this all the time to this very freaking day. But this was something that Inatech was doing, right? Yeah. And that was their job. Their job was to shave off the top. And the, the two programmers, Michael Bolton and Samir... Uh, were the two bigger programmers the that ones got who created it. So he goes to them and says, hey, we need to create this piece of software yep. to shave off the top. The company won't miss it. No one will miss it. And it'll be, you know, maybe a few hundred thousand dollars over the next few years. And we can all have some extra cash in our pockets. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a great plan. And they're all like, no, 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 until they get fired. Mm -hmm. And then they're <laughs> like, we're in. Peter, remember that plan you had? Yeah, exactly. And then they do it. They do, and then Peter installs it into mm -hmm. the into the system because he still works there, and yeah, uh, he's promoted. Oh yeah, he's promoted. He's, he's like, like boss. Of, he, they don't never really show he's the it. Boss. They never really show it. Like they never show like who he's boss of or anything like that. They just you know he's got a promotion. He now. got what promoted, do do? Yeah. yeah, because they're they're super pissed. Like they, they think that he got fired too. He's like, well, actually, I got a promotion. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, oh, you acted like that and you got it, which honestly like, it's happened. Unjust. It's unfair. It is. But is it? Unf I feel like that happens all the time, and I feel like we also put ourselves in positions where, like, we think we're the best for the job, and then we don't get hired from it, and then or somebody else says because they know the person, or right. or maybe there's some sort of um, connection that is not related to work. It's like you feel like duped. Like his, if I was his friend, I'd be pissed. Yeah, it's to, to the certain, extent to of like degree. I did everything I was supposed to do, and you did the opposite, and you got promoted. Exactly, and he he sells to them that look the unjustness of this. It is unjust, and then that's when that's when he convinces them, hey, let's do this plan, and then they get rich, and they um, but in, in the meantime, they they that's where the infamous printer scene comes in. It well, because they know better. Yeah. Like you're like, you know what, fuck this, <laughs> yeah. and okay, no, that's another fun fact about this. When it they first came out with it, all the gangster rap, I guess they said take it out. They did. They, they actually they there didn't was a want it. There was a focus group they did, and the focus group said that none of this is good. The public is not going to like it. I thought the it. focus group is what convinced them to keep it. I thought there was group, one kid in the focus group that said one like one kid in the focus group did say that, but it was the the majority of the focus group said, said no re to remove it, and he's like, well, I'm gonna do whatever the focus group. I'm gonna do whatever the hell I want and put all the music that in. Made I think it, it fits really it made, well. It, if you had that printer scene. With any other song, it wouldn't hit there as hard as it did. There are a few songs I could have selected for that printer scene, but, but, but they could, have, all of them would just, have been gangster rap. It, all of it them has would have been. Because you could have like a rock song, like, we're not going to take it. No. But it doesn't hit fit. the same. No, like, it wouldn't have fit. That it one It really hits. needed to be that that song was very, very, very well placed for it's, that. Well, they were beating their shit that's out That's what of that I'm printer. saying. And even in the beginning when they're in their car and like Michael Bolton's rapping. Yeah, yeah. And he rolls up the window <laughs> and then he locks no, the he door. he locks the door because the dude's selling flowers. Because he's selling the flowers. Side of the, <laughs> side of like, the freeway at that. That was kind of weird. That they, he was selling. Was I've seen him on the freeway. Yeah. Not in the middle island. I thought they were on a highway. No, it looks like they were on that a freeway, freeway, dude. I don't know. I don't he know anything like on, about Texas. He was like on the edge of the freaking K rail. Well, <laughs> like, he didn't like buy I, any flowers. All right, but it it's it really it really made the tone of the movie. It I don't know. I love it. it yeah, I feel yeah, like the, if the music the was rap, different, all the rap was very very very. Well it placed. needed to be there yeah, absolutely, and 100%. in that printer scene especially, that song it hits like yeah. that was a really good call really on their good. on their end yeah i put an in search of on freaking shit book to see if we can get a printer <laughs> and that it didn't happen not yet i just, I put, it up. I just put it up like a like a, like we a half hour we need ago. a printer and we're gonna beat the shit out of it yeah we're gonna, we're gonna go it. to we're the middle of the desert we are. we're gonna get a baseball bat right here on the road <laughs> and we're and we gotta be in the desert we go to desert -ish, -ish yeah we'll go desert areas, areas, areas near, because oh wait, we live in the desert they do it in the desert, so well they're in Texas, well, but so we're we're at okay. So wait, Jennifer Aniston yes. is not okay with this shaving plan, by the way. So yeah, she thinks isn't that theft? Smart. Yeah. Smart yes, girl. Yes, it's well, yes, but no, it's not really. It's and then, theft. 
it, it's it's theft. I don't care how you look at it. You're you are stealing money from a company. Um, but ultimately, so they end up getting a lot more money than they thought. They ended up getting three hundred three hundred thousand dollars. Three hundred, yeah, something like that. You so checked they, his bank account and was like, oh. And it was like literally over like a week, weekend or something like that. It was insane. Would so, you just take the money and would you just take it and run? I don't think that they would have ever got caught. I don't think they would have got caught either. I think they were I, super I, paranoid I, about nothing. I, I think Samir was overly paranoid. And then Michael Bolton is, was a sweaty little kid. <laughs> it's like, oh no, we're gonna get. But I then don't, I, 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 really I don't, don't know. I want to talk because I also think like I would have had, I might have had panic attacks about yeah, maybe they, getting caught. They also didn't do. I mean, not not to not to play play into the fraud. They had it go into their own bank account. That was freaking stupid. That would that's <laughs> that was, that's yeah, crazy. That, that might get them. caught. Where'd the money go? Yeah, that that might get them. Caught. It's, so, if you're gonna shave cash, yeah, it's got to be a cash transaction. Like you're right, they're well, absolutely I mean, gonna there, get there's, caught. There's other ways. I mean, anyway, we won't get into the oh, illeg- tell us the other legalities <laughs> of it. But they didn't do. I How don't, else can I make they, money? They tried. To, <laughs> they they, they try to do it kind of legit, but not legit because they're still skimming off the top of a company's money that's not theirs. I know. So their answer. But you, you don't feel bad because we love the character so much. Oh, I didn't feel bad that you they're taking it. Even saying, if like, they cash it out and bail to the Bahamas, I would have not. I don't. Felt yeah, like I kind of don't care because it's like it's stealing from a large corporation like that, I could give two shits. And the corporation, like when we get that that back end, like they said, they don't care about firing people or whatever. It's like no, they never yeah, did. you're like, well, I'll steal yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. I have no like. I don't think I would do it. I don't, I don't think I'd be able to do it. But yeah. if somebody else were to do it, I'd be like, good on you. So Peter does eventually say. Uh, this is bad. This is bad. And he's going to turn so, himself in. But then they decide not to turn himself in. He decides he's going to write a check and slip it underneath Lombard's door. <sighs> yeah. And Instant then, regret. Because <laughs> he slips the check under the door and he can't reach it. Remember, he kind of has second thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he like, does. But then I can't get it. Milton goes in and he's like, I'm going to get my stapler. Because he got. he's basically he, he's realizing that he's pretty much fired. Yeah. Well, he's go, been fired. Yeah, but. yeah, he's been fired. But now he's realizing that he's actually fired. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. It, and he's like, he's not, he's not here right now. So she's the secretary steps away, and um, he's like, I'm gonna go get my stapler. And he walks into Lombard's office to go get the stapler. Peter couldn't get it, but the door was unlocked. <laughs> yeah. Well, what? That's... He didn't try to open the door. I guess. Oh but, my god. But Doug. Milton, Milton walks in, and then he clearly ends up with that three hundred thousand dollar check. Do you, does he take the check? Oh yeah, I think so. I think before Mil- he sets it on fire. I think, yeah, I think Milton gets the okay. money before he sets the whole building on fire. Milton is the type of person that if you have a Milton at you, your job, you buy them a candy bar or in this case a stapler, and you say, "Hey, Milton's." I got your back, Milton. Milton's the uh, the the kind of guy you really don't want to be on the bad side of. No, when he says, "I'm going to burn down the building," he wasn't fucking around. You listen to oh, him. Yeah. It's those quiet ones. You oh, really got to watch out for the uh, quiet ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's but like, he said he's on, it. He's on. Oh, he did. He said it a few times. Many a times. Yeah, he said it a few times. I'm just like, well, I'm set the building on fire. <laughs> okay. But also, they. <laughs> the but they didn't have again. Even the human decency enough to tell him that, hey, you've been fired. Sorry, there's been a thing. Like they are to that to these business people. Milton's not even worth a conversation. So you know what. Yeah, I know. He's. It, I. I. They had it coming. See where I see where he came from. They had it coming, and this is kind of maybe where, not arson, but you yeah, know, maybe not arson. Arson is so. So like, there's a few things that uh, you can you can get away with when it comes to like damaging property, and there's a few things that. Oh are yeah, tell me super, more. Super, <laughs> super, super investigated. Um, arson being one of yeah, them. Yeah, huge. He is like greatly investigated. Murder, obviously, being one of them. Do you think this movie has a happy ending? Yes. You think it's a happy ending? I think it's that whole getting out of his norm. This this was a giant roundabout kind of way of him leaving his job because he couldn't go back to it because it was gone. Well, it was gone. It was gone. Now what? Which, now he's, which now again kind of puts him. that emphasis on like, we, you know, we put so much on like, oh, it had, or, you know, I have to be I this have or I have to do that. So I have to do that. At the end of the day, that building could just fucking explode and everything's gone. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? So all that stress, yeah. everything, it, it's. It goes to zero. Yeah, you know th- th- this is why this movie kind of gets correlated or kind of put put in the same book as uh, as Fight Club. Fight Club was the same type of thing, getting out of that mundane because he, he worked that same job I, until you're right, until but he pretended to beat himself up from the, the boss to get continuously get paid. It's like the same thing, but real different. 
Well, yeah, to a certain degree, but it was like that. I mean, Edward Norton whole... shoots himself in the face. Like Peter steals no, 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 no. some I'm money. Not talking, like I'm not. I'm not talking about the violence behind it. I'm not even the fact, but the way I'm for it to end. About, I'm talking about the the fact that they're trying to eliminate the the reason why we all grind every single day. Like just getting to, rid of because it because they their idea to fix the world was to eliminate the 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 three bureaus, the three large bureaus, yeah. right? The freaking trans union. Uh, although the you're you, breaking rule number one though. Well, I'm not in Fight Club. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I give two shits. Yeah, the other one though, was like a huge, like a huge, very, very, very close tie together, and I feel like they're in the same universe. Okay, is actually I think that that Fight Club was in the same universe too. Is the Matrix? I feel the Matrix and Office Space are in the same universe. I believe that Neo works for Inatech. But in the downtown office. Oh, you're because the same a, company. Well, there's like a, there's a, a shot at the very beginning where Peter looks up over the um, over his cubicle looking for Lombard. Uh huh. Neo does the same thing looking for agents, and I feel like they're the same thing trying to get out of this this cycle of bullshit we do every well, day. Well, and you're right, and it and does also what, have that correlation the Matrix with, is about. with Fight Club and the Matrix. It's the yeah. same thing. It's 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 getting out of the mundane mindset but i think there's something better out there office space did it i guess in the most realistic way well of course duh. right because when yeah, you compare like a sci-fi movie when you compare <laughs> when you compare matrix and that but it's it's yeah, the yeah. sense of it's a little bit more relatable in the sense of like yeah i feel like this i feel like peter i feel like the everyday person who oh who yeah wakes up every day you can relate miserable. To you can relate absolutely 100 percent. you can relate to peter you can relate to lawrence you can relate michael to bolton michael you can relate to uh to pretty much anybody in that company you've you've known somebody that acts like there's always that trope right All, every single one of those tropes that are in that office building mm-hmm. you've met one of those people. i've never been a boss You've never been a boss. I've never been a boss. Like I've never yeah. been in the position where like other I'm responsible for other people's work. Uh, it's not. It's not all it's cut out to be. I, I don't think I would. I don't think I would. I mean, I have. I've been offered like management positions, and I'm yeah. like, no, I don't Manage, think. And, and then management is like you're like that's middle, right? You're it's mid, like babysitting. You're, mid you're you're uh, you're supervising a, a group, a smaller group of people. But when you're like an, an owner, or you're a vice president of, or you're a director of. I think that's a whole different. That's different. That's a I'm, whole different I'm saying animal. management yeah. is weird because you're there to make sure other people are doing their job. To a certain degree, I mean, as long as you hire people that know what the fuck they're doing, your job is to to, to to delegate. You're really not there to babysit because if you're there to babysit, that means the people that you have underneath you are not good enough to have as employees, right? Because if well, you're, that's true. If I'm, if I'm having to babysit every single person because they're not doing their job right, then maybe they're not really intended to be there. Well. One time I got super drunk at work. It was my birthday. Des was there. Oh and the ma- <laughs> we were all outside. <laughs> and the manager came out. <laughs> and he told everyone to go back in. I don't know why we were all outside, but we were. And he's like, hey, you guys need to like go back to work. So I somehow finish out the shift. I don't know how. Right. And then like we're in the back and we're counting money. And I just keep saying, I'm like, I'm going to get fired. I'm like, his- <laughs> I'm like, manager, you're going to fire me. Like, I'm it. You're going to get fired. And everyone... <laughs> Didn't you drive me? They were like, get her out of here. <laughs> they were like, get her out of here. But I was like really worried. I mean, honestly, I should have been worried because I broke a rule. But it's my birthday. So. Well, I mean, maybe you had a freaking, uh, what's his name from freaking uh, Empire Records? Joe. Maybe you had a Joe for oh, a boss. Oh, he was such. A, that manager was a Joe. Was he, a Joe? He didn't care. I yeah. mean, he cared, but like not really cared. Exactly. So, yeah, if you have a Joe for a boss, you can pretty much well, do whatever the funny, fuck you want. It's funny. to he wanted to go home. He wanted us ah. to do our job so he could go home. Fair which, enough. Which makes sense. But I it's funny because they were young. He was way younger. Well, that's, that's different though. You're not I'm not constantly going, okay, you you gotta you can wipe down the bar. Okay, you make it, sure you no, serve these sure. fucking people drink. I, and that's, you can do your fucking job. That's a different story. You got trashed one day on your freaking birthday. It, it's it's, it's it not a, a managerial and it wasn't even fucking a real, grilling. Exactly. It, it wasn't a real event. That's, it was country different. night, which isn't it was still a real but that was a very like sure it, it was a chill kind of we weren't we didn't yes. have any performers or anything like that it was right. it was the one day I, I probably could get really drunk it's not i don't have to tell you to go back and go you know get back to the bar get no back to the, the job bar. got done the but he the but they do have to sit that there and tell like busters to do this or like dishwashers oh. to do that or Are whatever busters and dishwashers usually kids though yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That pans out. I, everyone though. at this job was Those a kid. Those you do have to babysit. Except for they us. Are, they're freaking kids. It's but right? it's but I I guess that's it felt funny because the tables were turned. I think that was the first time I've ever been told to like get back to work. 
Because yeah. I usually was so like on it with work. That was yeah, but you were drinking. Yeah, but that wasn't directly directly at you. It wasn't. There was like a group. All of us. There was like so twelve was, of us so outside. Should have been working. So this was directed at your entire group. The whole place was abandoned. Oh, I, everybody, everybody was in the back. I might have led the charge. Oh, I see. I, I might have said, hey, let's go over here. Like, I I might have been guilty in that sense, but I didn't force everyone to come out. We just all did. Maybe he was sad because he wasn't invited. You guys are dicks. That's what it was. See. Shit. Well, see? No one was really invited. So now, now. I know. It all just kind of happened. Now you're the asshole. So the, the building now is, is like burnt to the it freaking is ground. It's burning on fire. And Peter's much happier because he's working a construction job. He doesn't have to, he's working with his hands. He's a happy camper. He's still with Joanna. And it, it's just, it just ends on a happier he, note. But literally, what all he needed to get to that happier note, he didn't even need to go through that hypnosis. No, he just session. needed to quit and go get a construction quit job with Lawrence. Quit your job, quit your girlfriend because she was cheating on him. Yeah. Which again, like put more, you should. Not saying you should know that, but I'm saying like no, because a lot of people get, so get, even, get, get love struck or you know I, what I mean. I think, so that's just I hard think, for them to get I past that. I think the whole point of it wasn't about his love for her. I think it was the convenience of her. Yeah, that's what the usually fact is. that like Sorry, Lauren, not love, yeah. but even the fact because Lawrence, the neighbor, was like, yeah, I think she is cheating on you. Like it was, right. it must have been so prevalent that there wasn't a loving relationship right. here that it didn't. It, it was easier to throw to the side, and then we all rooted for Jennifer Aniston because. Now we want him to feel something real because his last relationship was kind of a joke. Right. So we want, like, we kn I know as a person, the more Peter goes out and kind of explores the world and learns that, like, this doesn't have to be the end, you know, like, the, the grass is, can be greener, yeah. It can yeah. be. When you, when you get out of something that it puts you in such a bad headspace, you need to get out of it. It's like, yeah, guess what? Construction, you work with your hands. It's It probably, it's not only good, Probably wasn't only good for his mindset, but his body too. Like you're kind of working out, which killing two birds with one stone is fantastic. Right. And you got a better girlfriend and yeah. your neighbor's dope. So like everything else is on the up and up. His friends still got fired. I don't know what they did. Did they show what uh, like Samir and Michael ended they didn't, up doing? They, oh, what they did for jobs afterwards? Yeah, no, they, didn't they don't show, show them. They don't show them. They're it probably really, broke and depressed. They're, I'm just they, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they might have uh never mind the side characters or are that the, or the woman what was her name the one who's uh cut the one who answered the phone nina what happened to nina yeah who gives a shit she became hr somewhere that's what happened so, to nina. she's so hr vibes <laughs> she's, HR, that, she's the most hr yeah. vibes speaking of of nina who's the most uh punchable character oh who do i want to punch the most yeah gosh nina <laughs> i know why is it nina it's not yeah, it nina is. absolutely why? because 100%. she i no, it's the it's it's what's her name's coworker at who? the restaurant, the one who's like you oh, get a room. You do. the yeah, one she's who not wears a main character though. The, so I don't no, care the for dude, her. the dude who wears like forty seven pieces of flair. I That's liked the him. guy. What the fuck? <laughs> Jesus Christ! He, he was such a he was a jerk. he played the jerk really really well though. He does okay. that. He does that in a lot of films. He plays that part really He's well. He's good at being that kind of He's condescending. He's good at being a condescending little shit. It, you know, it, yeah. it gives me that same vibe of like so, um, some uh, some jalapeno poppers today. Yeah, like <laughs> it's the person who does. Oh my gosh, I want, yeah, like the person who does the most, and then but then like shits on the people who aren't doing the most kind of thing. Yeah, and like oh I'm doing. I don't know. I'd punch that guy. <laughs> That's the guy I want to punch. No, oh not Nina. God. She's fine. Nina's not fine. She's Nina is a condescending a woman little shit. Surviving in the corporate world in no. the nineties, and no, so she, was, she gets a she's, pass. She's an absolute asshole through a lot of. She has a lot of asshole lines in this film. Okay, do you think that Office Space walked so workaholics could run? Did you ever see no, workaholics? Yeah, I did, but I don't think they're. You don't the think same. they correlate? Yeah, I, I think, think they're I get the same. same sort of vibe. I think they were inspired by it. Honestly, I you think so. I, oh yeah. It's that yeah. same kind of cubicle, call center-y type work environment. Yeah. That sounds kind of boring. Okay, Lombard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything anymore. <laughs> You're just going to come back with Lombard. Yeah. Yeah. Lombard. yeah. yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Could you come in on a Sunday? I don't know. I don't know if I, I, I think that that one set the tone for the other, but I feel like they're probably in the same realm of the same type of film. The same type of show. That's a show, right? Yeah, I feel, but I feel like the ins it would have been an inspiration for them, or like a, uh, you know, like that jumping off point or insp I, inspiration. I, that's what I'm looking for. I, I feel like this was probably more along the lines of, on the same along lines of waiting for restaurants. I we need to do that one. Oh, we will. Uh, so I waiting is also a great freaking film. And then there was another one too. Uh, 
what's it called? Oh, Slam shoot. and Salmon. No, I didn't really care for that film. No, there was one where it's in, a, de- in a department store. Um, Jessica Simpson was in it. Employee of the Month at yeah. Costco. Yeah, that, yeah. Is, that was funny as hell. I watched that movie because I, first of all, I was a huge um, Jessica Simpson fan. Right, right. And then I was also a huge Dane Cook fan. The only reason Dane I... Dane Cook's s- kind of a tool. But oh, hell yeah, he is. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. I 100% agree yeah. with you. But at the time, yeah, yeah. early 2000s when I was in high school... Dane Cook was a tool then too, though. But I was, I thought he was hilarious. Like, I... Yeah, see, as soon as he left freaking MTV, he was kind of a I thought he was great. So I only saw Waiting because I knew Dane Cook was in it. Uh, and he's barely in it. But I went to go see it because because Dan Cook was in it. I see. He he could have had a really good career if he didn't steal jokes and then literally marry like 16-year-olds, but that's for another episode. That is for another episode, <laughs> but you're not wrong. I'm not <laughs> you're, wrong. you're not wrong. I'm not gonna I okay. ain't gonna knock you for that that perception of him. Okay, office space on a scale of one to ten staplers, how many staplers are you giving it? Ooh, that's a tough one. I know. Like, what are you rating staple how many staplers 7. is seven point three? 7.3 staplers? Yeah, it's a good film. It's a good film. I'm gonna go up to eight. You're gonna go to eight. I I think and and it's it captures such an epic time between like like they said the end of the Cold War and pre 9 11, which is like just I don't know. There's something about 1999. Like it, it, obviously creativity for movie was huge because we had so many we great had films so many come good out. Films. I mean, and a change in the way films are even made with the Matrix. Yeah, right? so and that just, was like insane. iconic for just the like the new millennium. You know. Yeah. So I'm gonna give it an eight. Fair Office enough. space Fair eight. Enough. That kind yeah. of rhymes. All right. Well, I'll you give it an eight. So we got a seven point. I guess seven point three. So we were at like a seven point six. Good enough. All right. Sweet. Do you guys agree? Do you agree? Do you agree with our ratings? Do you like the movie? Do you hate the movie? I want to know. How Let many us know in the you, comment section down below. How many staplers do you give this movie? Yeah. Exactly. And how, many, just, how many specifically red staplers do you give this? Movie? Would you just buy Milton a stapler? Because I would. I would I just buy him one. I would have bought him. One. I would have just get him. The his second own. that they took it away, I would have ordered. I would have. Asked you to make a sticker so I could put his name on it. <laughs> <laughs> also, my stomach's growling. Can yeah. anyone hear me? Yeah, I, I always feel one. like it's going to pick up. <laughs> anyway, it was like, I hope you guys all enjoyed this episode. I sure as hell did. Uh, don't forget to do all the things down below. The likes, the subscribes, and everything else. Follow along. Don't forget to share this with your friends and family because we're trying to grow this channel and the podcast. And we need your help in order to do that. And also, don't forget to... Backhand the notification bell. Just like Dad used to do. And until the next one, see ya. Bye. Yodel. Yodel. It's just fun to have a microphone. <laughs>